Hi there and thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Myron Salant and you're watching the screencast from muzzblog.com. Today's screencast is a tutorial on the terminal application that comes with Mac OS X. If you are using Mac OS X, the way to find the terminal is to click the applications icon on the dock, click the utilities uh, directory and scroll down until you find the terminal application. You can invoke it by double clicking. I've added the terminal application to my dock which sits over here. So I can open that up quite quickly as I do make frequent use of it. The first thing you're going to notice when you open the terminal or the shell is the last login and that took place at uh, 32 minutes past 11 and 42 seconds on April the 4th and I'm then presented with the actual command prompt. Now the command prompt is made up of the computer's domain name which in this case is myron salans macbook 2 followed by a colon the tilde is representative of the home directory in this case, and that will change as we change directories throughout the tutorial. I then have my username, which is Maz, that's me, followed by the dollar prompt, or the dollar character, which represents that I'm not logged in as root. The first command I'd like to teach you all today would be the ls command, and the ls is used to list files, and as you can see after typing the two letters and hitting the return key, I'm presented with the folders that are currently in my home directory. Now if I'd like to list these files in a list format, I can use something called a string on the ls command, and I do that by going ls space minus l. And that's going to give us a list of files. Now to run through this with you very quickly, I have the file or folder permissions. In this particular case, this is read and write permissions um, to everyone. I have the file owner, which is myself, the group it belongs to, the last date modified, and the actual file or folder name. Now to clear the screen very quickly, I'm going to use the command clear followed by the return key, and that'll bring us back to a nice, clear screen. Now, let's say, for example, I'd like to see all the files or folders, including hidden uh, files or folders listed in the home directory. Again, I can use a string on the ls command, and that would be ls-l to list the files in a list format, and invoke the a command, which will essentially list all. So as you can see, hidden files are prefixed by a dot. Now this is very useful in the sense of if you don't want to configure your, your Mac preferences to show hidden files for security purposes, it's very easy to invoke the terminal and search for something that you might want to keep private by using the ls-a or ls-la command. The next command I'd like to look at today would be the cd or change directory command. So to do this I'm going to use that and I'm going to hop into the root directory for the system which will always be slash, that's the root and I'm going to use ls to list the files and folders located in the root. As you can see, the various files and folders are listed over here, and again, just to, to summarize, I can use the ls-l command, and that will then give it to me in a, a list format. I'm going to hop into etc, which is where the, a lot of the configuration files are stored for Mac OS X and uh, general Linux distributions, and again, I can do an ls-l and that's obviously going to give me all the files and folders located in the root directory. Let's clear the screen real quick. Now, let's say, for example, I'd like to know which directory or where my path is. We can see here that because we are in the etc directory, um, the current directory on the prompt has changed to etc. But if I'd like to invoke that and see my full path, as opposed to just the directory, I'm going to use the pwd command and that'll tell me that I am in slash etc. If I'd like to return to my home directory, there are a couple of ways of doing this. The first way would be to hit cd tilde and that again brings us back to the root directory or if I'd like a, a nice little shortcut, I can use the cd command on its own and that will bring me back to the root directory. The next thing I'd like to look at very quickly is how to make a directory, and I can do that by using the command mkdir space directory name. I can then see that, oh, a little bit of a typo, muzz blood1234, and I can then cd into muzz 
blood one two three four now a nice shortcut over here would be to use the CD command and if I use MU and hit the tab key it's going to give me the full extension of the directory or file name up until the point that the characters differ so for example in the ls above here you can see that we have mas blood and mas blog and when I hit the tab command it's going to give me mu double z b l o and then it would be up to me to complete so I'm going to hit the D key now hit the tab key and it's a nice way of uh, shortcutting a long directory or file name as you can see the directory is empty so to go back home again and clear the screen away we go let's have a look at a very basic text editor and that would be Pico you can also try nano N -A -N -O, for those who can't invoke the Pico command it's a very basic text editor and when I hit uh, control X it's going to ask me if I want to save, followed by what file name I'd like to save it as. And there it is, created at 11.39 on April the 4th. To remove a, uh, a file, I'm simply going to go rm space hel, and because there's no other files that start with hel, it will prefix. And there we go, that's removed it. If I want to remove the masblot directory, I'm going to use the rm-r to remove the files or folders recursively, followed by mu, tab, d, tab, and that will remove the masblot folder. Okay, one last command I'd like to show you all before we end the tutorial is the top command. The top command is... Uh, gives a, an overview of how the system is performing at the moment and it's quite useful for if it's if it's running low we can see the processes at the top 48 in total of which three are running one is stuck 45 are sleeping and there are 222 threads with the current time it then lists some various information about the CPU usage because this is a core 2 duo I have uh, two cores over here and I can monitor each of them they seem to be running in sync with one another nice and evenly um, physical memory, active memory, inactive memory, used in cache, and how much memory is in fact free, followed by the actual um, PIDs and the actual applications that are running. A PID number is the way the system identifies the uh, actual application. We then have the actual command or application invoked, how much uh, CPU usage it's, it's using at the moment, the time it's been running for, and uh, having a look over here, we have various other options, memory usage, and the amount of threads that it is using. To exit top, you're going to use the Q command, and that'll bring us back to our prompts. And the final thing I'd like to show you before we end the tutorial is how to string some commands together, and we can do that by using the semicolon feature. So for example, the system will list all the files in a list format, or then cd to slash etc, uh, and we'll follow that by a sleep for two seconds to help the system and we'll follow that by a clear flag. So ls minus l, cds into etc and then goes ahead and uh, sleeps for two seconds and clears the screen. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It is available for download in high definition at masblog.com. Click on the tutorial link and find the tutorial and click on the download link. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to you receiving your comments. Thanks very much for watching.